so uh, today we uh, begin uh, with Act 1, Scene 1. Uh, and here we see that there is a conversation between Antonio and Delio. Uh, who is Delio? Delio is a courtier. And uh, we know that Antonio, uh, Antonio is a steward of that uh, royal house. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> so in this conversation, we'll get uh, an information about uh, the courtly affairs, the courtly affairs of uh, France, as well as the courtly affairs of uh, uh, of the of the royal family where the Duchess lives. So here we'll get a kind of a conversation between. Uh, a, a kind of difference between uh, the court of France and the court of uh, Melfi. <coughs> uh, anyway, so uh, let us focus on uh, uh, a speech by Antonio. Uh, here Antonio uh, makes a very important remark that a princess court, the line number is uh, uh, it's 11. Line number 11, Act 1, Scene 1, line number 11. That a princess court is like a common fountain. So a princess court is like a common fountain. So here is a com uh, comparison between uh, the court of the prince, that is uh, a king's court, and the fountain. So uh, the suggestion here is that uh, the princess court or the uh, king's court is the fountain that is the source of uh, uh, all uh, resources of the country. So it is the uh, center of power and uh, it, uh, it is the uh, fountain that is the source of all kinds of happiness uh, and the well-being of the country because uh, everything is decided in the court. So, uh, Antonio says that princess court is like a common fountain whence should flow pure silver drops in general. So, the, uh, the court or the courtiers and the king, they should uh, look upon the happiness of the people, the well-being of the people. But if uh, it chants uh, some cursed example, poison near the head, death and diseases through the whole land spread. So, if that head or that fountain, that is uh, the royal court, gets uh, corrupted, uh, if it gets uh, rotten, then the whole country uh, uh, will be at stake. So, it is very important that uh, the court should be free from any kind of corruption, any kind of uh, malpractices, uh, so that uh, such kind of things cannot spread throughout the country. So, uh, if the court gets uh, corrupt, uh, it infects the whole country. So, this is a very important remark made by Antonio. And this uh, particular remark uh, emphasizes upon the fact that uh, the court of Malfi is actually corrupted or the rulers who are uh, ruling this uh, kingdom are actually corrupt. Anyway, uh, come to line number uh, 20. Oh, here is a remark by Bosola. So enter Bosola. Bosola says that the only court goal yet I observe his railing is not for simple love or piety. Indeed, he rails at those things which he wants. Would it be lecherous, covetous, or proud, bloody, or envious as any man if he had means to be so? Here is the cardinal. So here we get another character uh, who is named who is named Bosola. 
So who is Bosula? Bosula is uh, a former servant of the cardinal, 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 that is the brother of the duchess. Okay. Cardinal, the cardinal, the brother of the duchess and Ferdinand. Ferdinand and the cardinal, they are uh, the two brothers of the duchess. And Bosula is uh, as a servant of the cardinal. <coughs> So Bosula is here, uh, um, as we uh, see him, he, he, he has just returned from uh, a sentence, a punishment uh, in the Galois for murder. Anyway, now he is making uh, some important remark about the uh, condition of the court. The only court goal yet I observe his railing is not for simple love of piety. Indeed, he rails at those things which he wants. Would it be as lecherous, covetous, and proud, bloody, or envious as any man, if he had means to be so? Here is the cardinal. So cardinal is described by Bosola as someone who is lecherous, covetous, and proud, bloody, envious. So he is the ruler of that, uh, that kingdom, but at the same time he is also uh, lecherous and uh, and corrupt. Anyway, <coughs> then uh, enters Cardinal and Bosla says, "I do haunt you still, Cardinal. So, Bosla, I have done you better service than to be slighted thus." So here is the suggestion. Uh, that Bosola was actually appointed by Cardinal as a spy. Okay, uh, just to spy upon his sister. So Bosola has been appointed by Cardinal as a spy, uh, that is to spy upon his sister, the Duchess. And he says that, uh, as we know, that Cardinal. Uh, is a corrupt person, so he has uh, mistreated Bosula as well, and that is why Bosula says that I have done you better service than to be slighted thus. Miserable age, where only the reward of doing well is the doing of it. So he is not rewarded uh, uh, for the for the work that he has just done. You enforce your merit too much. Now come to uh, line number 44, uh, the remark by Bosula. Some fellows, they say, are possessed with the devil, but this great fellow were able to possess the greatest devil and make him worse. So Bosula, as we see that he is very much familiar with this particular character, the cardinal, and he says that he is uh, the greatest devil uh, who can uh, do the worst uh, destruction to uh, any person. Anyway, uh, now come to uh, line number 49, uh, the speech by Bosula. Here Bosula again says that he and his brother are like palm trees that grow crooked over standing poles. Very important remark by Bosula. So here Bosula compares the two brothers, the cardinal and cardinal, uh, with uh, palm trees that grow crooked over standing pools. So uh, a kind of simile that is used by uh, Bosula to describe the two brothers. Uh, so palm trees uh, that grows on steep mountains. Okay, the palm trees that grow crooked over standing pools, they are rich and overladen with fruit, but none but grows peas and caterpillars feed on them. So, uh, they are rich, uh, they are uh, powerful, uh, just like palm trees which uh, grow on the steep mountains, but its fruits uh, uh, are never available to uh, people uh, or the common people. Uh, 
its fruits are only eaten by crows okay so here is the reference to uh, cardinal and bossola uh, sorry uh, Card uh, cardinal and ferdinand that uh, even though they are rich even though they are powerful but they are typically corrupt and of no use to the uh, people of the country Here again, another uh, important remark by Bossola in line number uh, 66. Here, Bossola says that, and yet do not you spawn us. For places in the court are but like beds in the hospital, where this man's head lies at the man's foot, and so lower and lower. So here, the court is the royal court is compared with uh, the beds in hospital where this man's head lies at that man's foot and so lower and lower. So uh, the court and the uh, person who presided over the court only crushes people by his power. So the corruption that, uh, that prevails everywhere in that court and then uh, there is a remark by Antonio in line number 75. Antonio says, It is great pity he should be thus neglected. I have heard he is very valiant. This foul melancholy will poison all his goodness. For I will tell you, if too immoderate sleep be truly said to be an inward rust into the soul, it then doth follow want of action breeds all black malcontents. Anyway, uh, so here uh, scene one ends and uh, in the scene one we see that uh, Bosula, as it is suggested by his speech that he uh, receives maltreatment or abrupt treatment from his former employer that is uh, the cardinal on whose behalf he committed the murder that led to his prison sentence. And here we also uh, are also introduced to it uh, other two characters, Antonio and Delio. <laughs> now come to scene two. Here is a conversation again between uh, Delio, Antonio and uh, Ferdinand and another character who is also introduced here who, uh, who is named Castruccio. Okay. <clears throat> Castruccio, who is Castruccio? He is an old lord. Uh, his uh, particular name plays on the word castrated, suggesting his importance. So here he is presented as a conventional elderly man uh, with a young unfaithful wife and his wife's name is Julia. So again another character is introduced Julia. Julia is here uh, represented as an unfaithful wife of Castruccio. Castruccio uh, as the name suggests that he is important, that is frustrated, and uh, he is a typically uh, a kind of a uh, conventional elderly woman with a young and unfaithful wife. So, come to uh, line number line number 80 80 okay uh, a speech by Antonio in scene one uh, so act one scene two line number 80 Antonio some such flashes superficially hang on him perform 
but observe his inward character. He is a melancholy church man. So, uh, here uh, the cardinal is described as a melancholy church man. Okay. He is melancholy. He is always sad. Uh, uh, he is a at the, uh, and at the same time he is a corrupt uh, official uh, of the church, the Roman Catholic Church, and he is always melancholy, a kind of uh, icy character, always old and melancholy. The spring in his face is nothing but the endangering of toads. While he is jealous of any man, he lays worse plots for them and ever was imposed on uh, Hercules for his truths in his way flatterers, panders intelligences, atheists, and a thousand such political monsters. He should have been Pope, but instead of coming to eat by the primitive decency of the church, he did bestow bribes so largely and so impudently as if he would have carried it away without heaven's knowledge, some good he had done. So again, uh, the corrupted nature of Cardinal is exposed by Antonio. So even though he is a churchman, uh, he is highly corrupt and he is always in a melancholy mood. Now come to uh, line number 170, a remark by Ferdinand. So here is a conversation between Bosola and Ferdinand. And here Ferdinand says that your inclination to shed blood rights post before my occasion to use you. I give you that to live in the court here and observe the Duchess to note all the particulars of her behavior. What suitors do solicit her for marriage and whom she best affects? She is a young widow. I would not have her marry again. So by this uh, remark, we can uh, uh, very well uh, understand uh, the character of this particular person, Ferdinand, the, the, the brother of the Duchess, that he is uh, dead against uh, his sister's remarriage. Uh, so the Duchess, uh, who is a widow, and uh, his brother Ferdinand is completely against this, uh, this uh, proposal of remarriage. Okay, so she is a young widow. So this particular uh, uh, remark by Ferdinand also uh, evokes uh, different kind of uh, connotations. Uh, she is a young widow. So why he is considering her as uh, a young widow? Uh, maybe uh, this particular person is uh, has a kind of a uh, sexual interest in in his sister and that is why he, he looks upon her as a young widow. I would not have her marry again so he is uh, complete uh, dominance over uh, his sister also suggests that uh, patriarchal uh, culture that, uh, uh, that was practiced uh, by the two brothers uh, at that time. Anyway, so they are deciding uh, what to do or what uh, what not to do, what the Duchess should do and what she should not do. So uh, they are also uh, interfering upon her personal choices. So even though she is a Duchess, uh, her brother brothers are controlling her and completely uh, dominating over her personal uh, life.
And here we see that Basula is appointed as a spy or as an intelligencer uh, to spy upon the Duchess because uh, uh, it is rumored that Duchess uh, uh, is having affair with Antonio, the steward of that royal family. In line number 192 uh, actually, uh, the remark by Bosola. Uh, Bosola says, I would have you curse yourself now that your bounty, which makes men truly noble, ever should make me a villain, oh, that to avoid ingratitude for the good deed you have done me. I must do all the ill men can invent. Thus the devil can these all sins over, and what heaven turns wild that names be complimented. And Bosla says in line number uh, 208, to listen to any talk, and yet these rogues have cut his throat in a dream. What is my place? The Provisorship uh, of the horse, say, then my corruption grew out of horse down. Again, Basula says, let good men for good deeds covet good fame, since place and reach often are bribes of shame. Then, after few lines, line number uh, 220. Uh, uh, a very important remark by Ferdinand. Marry, they are most luxurious, will wed twice. So, this particular remark uh, reveals uh, how much uh, patriarchal, uh, patriarchal mind or patriarchal bent of mind uh, Ferdinand possesses. He thinks that uh, those uh, those people who uh, who marry twice are most luxurious. That means they are uh, sexual maniacs, maybe. So uh, he is completely against that decision by the duchesses because he thinks that to marry twice uh, is a kind of lecherous or unchaste or lascivious lascivious act. Okay, uh, now uh, we, uh, we are first introduced to the character, uh, uh, the Duchess. So here Duchess makes a very important remark in line number, uh, oh, yeah. this is line number 220. The Duchess says, diamonds are of most value, diamonds are of most value they say, that have passed through most jewelers' hands. So a very important uh, remark, a very significant remark by the Duchess. The Duchess says that diamonds are most uh, valued, is given the uh, best value uh, by us, even though uh, it pass, passes through, uh, the, uh, uh, passes through uh, a number of jewelers hands. So, uh, the more the, uh, it passes through the jeweler's hands, uh, the more its value increases. That means uh, it's, uh, uh, however, it is polished and uh, refined by the jewelers, its value becomes increased. So, that is a very important remark. So, uh, our conventional uh, thinking is that anything which is uh, untouched, anything which is not used, uh, is valuable. But here, Duchess gives an example which proves that there are many valuable things which are uh, the value of which is increased. The more it is used, the more it is uh, uh, gets the touch of uh, the people. Okay, so that uh, this uh, this very example 
important example by Duchess uh, gives the suggestion that uh, patriarchal society always uh, gives value to something which is uh, untouched just like women are give, uh, only those women are given importance uh, uh, in the society uh, who uh, who remains untouched okay that means who are virgin they are given much more importance this is the patriarchal tendency of uh, value uh, evaluating something particularly uh, uh, in respect of women but the duchess says that there are various examples uh, which prove that uh, when something is uh, used or gets the touch of uh, many people its value increases <clears throat> so one example is diamond so naturally Ferdinand did not accept such kind of explanation so he is enraged he calls the duchess horse that is uh, prostitutes horse by that rule are precious so uh, Ferdinand here criticizes duchess by saying that only the horse or the prostitutes are precious uh, by that uh, by that uh, logic okay duchess will you hear me i will never marry so most widows say cardinal says but commonly that motion lasts no longer than the turning of a uh, hourglass the funeral sermon and eat and end both together Ferdinand says now hear me you live in a rank pasture here in the court there is a kind of honeydew that is deadly it will poison your frame a look to eat be not cunning for they whose faces do belie their hearts are witches here they arrive at 20 years ye, and give the devil sack. The Duchess says this is terrible good counsel. So here is uh, a very uh, a kind of argument between a haughty argument between the uh, Cardinal uh, Ferdinand and the Duchess that is the Duchess and, uh, and the true brothers. And here we see that they are completely against the Duchess decision to remarry. Uh, in line number 240, uh, here Cardinal says, the marriage night is the entrance into some prison. So another significant remark that reveals their, uh, their nature or their character. Uh, the two brothers as they are uh, very much against the remarriage of the Duchess. Uh, there may be uh, several reasons behind that. Uh, maybe they are they are profiters of the Duchess's wealth, or maybe uh, they are uh, uh, they are trying to control her personal life because they are highly patriarchal. Uh, maybe uh, they are trying to protect the honor of the royal family. Or maybe there is another reason that uh, they have a kind of incestuous uh, relationship with the Duchess. Maybe they have a kind of uh, physical attraction, hidden physical attraction towards their, to their sister. So uh, all these reasons may be working uh, or may be playing uh, behind uh, such kind of actions by the brothers Now there is a conversation between uh, Antonio and the Duchess.
Now come to line number uh, 300, uh, 355. Here is a uh, speech by the Duchess. Have you got the line? Line number 355. The Duchess says, Now she pays it the misery of us that are born great. We are forced to woo because none dare woo us. We are forced to woo because none dare woo us. As she is the Duchess, she is in the supreme power. So uh, nobody gets the courage to woo her. So and that is why she wooed the uh, that person, that is Antonio. And as a tyrant doubles with his words and fearfully equivocates. So we are forced to express our violent passions in riddles and in dreams and leave the path of simple virtue. So as uh, uh, women are always, uh, women have to suppress their thoughts, their desires, uh, as the patriarchal society does not allow such kind of uh, behavior by the women and that is why they uh, they sometimes equivocate sometimes they speak in riddles and in dreams and leave the path of simple virtue which has never made to seem the thing it is not go go brag you have left me heart heartless mine is your boss anyway. <coughs> again line number 300 84. Here Duchess says, Do not think of them. All discord without this circumstance is only to be pitied and not feared. And again another important remark by Duchess in line number 48. I would not have you laid your fortune by the hand until your marriage paid. You speak in me this, for we now are one. We'll only lie and talk together and plot to appease my humorous kindred. And if you please, like the old tale in Alexander and Ludwig, lay a naked sword between us, keep us chaste, or let me shroud my blushes in your bosom, since it is treasury of my secrets. Cariola, uh, another character. Who is Cariola? Cariola is the Duchess's uh, maid servant or waiting woman. Okay, uh, maid servant. She is Duchess's maid servant, and she is uh, privy to the Duchess's secrets. So she, she keeps her uh, secrets. So here is for Cariola. Uh, and she also witnesses the Duchess's marriage and delivers her children. Anyway, so here Cariola uh, says that whether the spirit of greatness or of woman reign most in her, I know not, but it, but it shows a fearful madness. I owe her much of pity. So here, uh, Act 1, Act 1 ends. Uh, with this particular scene. So in this particular scene we see that uh, Bosola uh, uh, and other characters uh, particularly the Duchess is uh, the Duchess is introduced in this particular character and another character uh, is also introduced, Cariola. <clears throat> now come to Act 2, Scene 1. Here is a significant remark by Bosola, a conversation between 
Castruccio, Castruccio and Bosna. So here Bosna says, I'll teach a trick, uh, line number 20. Bosola, I'll teach you a trick to know it, give out you uh, lie a dying. And if you hear the common people curse you, be sure you are taken for one of the prime nightcaps. And again in line number uh, 38, Bosola, very important remark. One would suspect it for a sh shock of witchcraft, to find in it the fat of serpents, spawn of snakes, Jew spittle, and their young children's orders, and all these for the face. I'd sooner eat a dead pigeon, taken from the soles of the feet of the sick of the plague, than kiss one of you fasting. So in this scene, uh, in this particular scene, that is uh, act to scene, act to scene one. Here we see that Bosola he mocks an elderly gentleman, Castruccio, because it begins, uh, begins with the conversation between Castruccio and uh, Bosola, and here uh, he mocks that elderly gentleman who has misguided ambitions for greatness. He also derides an old woman who has made vain attempt to look younger. That same old man is a midwife and he this strengthens Bosola's impression. Anyway, and here we get another significant uh, information that having observed the signs of pregnancy, Bosola presents the dish of apricots, which the Duchess greedily devours. Okay, apricots, that is a kind of fruit, uh, which uh, is served by Bosola to the Duchess. So his suspicions are confirmed. Unfortunately, the fruit has the effect of precipitating the onset of labor, and the Duchess is hurried away by her ladies for the uh, uh, for the help of the midwife so this uh, this was the trick played by Bosola uh, to reveal the duchess's pregnancy okay so a very significant uh, information that we get in this particular uh, scene where we see that Bosola applied a kind of a trick to expose the duchess's uh, secrecy secret affair with uh, Antonio. Now we come to Act 2, Scene 2. Here again, uh, there is uh, a conversation between Bosola and an old lady. So here we see that the Duchess, uh, sorry, uh, Bosola, who is now uh, uh, very much aware of the Duchess's condition, uh, that uh, she has secretly married Antonio, the steward of that royal family, and that uh, uh, that she is also bearing uh, the children of that that person and that is why here we see that Bosola is uh, criticizing all women for their lecherousness. So a kind of highly misogynistic uh, speech by Bosola in this particular scene. So here we see that between uh, uh, in his conversation with the old wife, sorry, this old lady, he rates the old woman that is the midwife with a speech of sexual innuendo and he condemns women as mere creatures of lust. So here he uh, castigates or criticizes all women as just 
mere creatures of lust, that is, they are just sexual maniac. Here he says in line number uh, 17, Basula says, the last spring smells well, but drooping autumn tastes well. Now we come to act two, scene three. Here is a conversation between Bosola and Antonio. So here we see that in the garden, uh, Bosola meets uh, Antonio. And here Antonio the steward explains, uh, explains uh, the horoscope that he carries as an estimate of the Duchess's losses. He then tries to head off in Paris by accusing Bosula of poisoning the apricots. So, in this uh, conversation, we see that Antonio is uh, blaming Bosula of poisoning the apricot and serving that poisonous apricot to the Duchess. Here in line number 35, Bosula says that you are a false steward. Antonio says, saucy slave, I will pull thee up by the roots. Maybe the ruin will crush you to pieces. You are an impudent snake indeed, sir. Are you scarce warm or do you show your sting? So a very uh, haughty conversation between these two people. Now come to scene number four, uh, act two, scene number four. So here is a conversation between Cardinal and Julia. Julia, that is a young wife of so, Cardinal says, Sit, thou are my best wishes, Prithi, tell me, what trick didst thou invent to come to Rome without thy husband? Why, my lord, I told him I came to visit an old uh, anchorite here for devotion. So here in this conversation between Cardinal and Julia, uh, we see that uh, they are discussing about their secret plan uh, and that they have a kind of a secret affair. Okay. And between their conversation, we see that uh, a servant enters a servant, line number 40. The servant says, Madam, a gentleman that is come from, uh, uh, come post from Malfi desires to see you. Let him enter. I'll withdraw. Exit. So here Delio comes and there is a conversation between uh, Julia and Delio. Anyway, now come to scene 5. Act 2, scene 5. And here we, in this particular scene, we see that Ferdinand, Cardinal, the two brothers, they both uh, uh, 
they burst out in furious obsessive uh, criticism uh, when Ferdinand learns of his sister's behavior. His anger here we see that it exceeds that of the cardinal who counsels caution. So here we see that Ferdinand he becomes almost mad with anger uh, uh, when he hears of the Duchess's uh, present condition that uh, she is having affair with uh, the Antonio and also bearing uh, his children. <coughs> Okay, so here we see that Ferdinand says, I have this night digged up a mandrake, say you, and I am grown mad with it. What is the prodigy? Read there a sister damned, she is loose, in the hills grown a notorious trumpet. So Ferdinand again compares his sister with a strumpet. Strumpet means prostitute. Speak lower, lower. Rogues do not wish for now, but seek to, pu pu to uh, publish it as servants uh, do the bounty of the laws. Anyway, uh, come to line number uh, 40. Uh, so, a very important speech by Ferdinand. Methinks I see her laughing. Excellent high now. So he is almost uh, like visualizing a duchess. Uh, Methinks I see her laughing. Uh, excellent. <coughs> Haina, so she is compared with a Haina. Talk to me somewhat quickly, or my imagination will carry me to see her in the shameful act of seeing. So a very significant remark by Ferdinand that suggests Ferdinand's. Uh, secret or hidden desire for his sister because uh, even in uh, uh, he is almost acting like a mad when he hears of uh, her sister's remarriage secret remarriage uh, so he has just gone mad and uh, the things he is saying suggest that he has he he is uh, possibly harboring secretly harboring a kind of a uh, uh, physical desire for her sister. Talk to me somewhat quickly or my imagination will carry me to see her in the shameful act of sin. So shameful act of sin that is and that uh, refers to uh, 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 that is uh, sexual act okay and that is uh, described as shameful act of sin. So he thinks that is sinful act on the part of a sister to re remarry and having affair with the steward of that house. <coughs> now at the end of that scene, uh, scene number uh, five, and here Ferdinand says that, uh, line number 75, Ferdinand says, nay, I have done I am confident, had I been damned in hell, and should have heard of this, it would have put me into a cold sweat. So even if he is dead, he is damned in hell, uh, he could be uh, very much uh, stirred by such, hearing such kind of news. In, in, I'll go sleep uh, till I know who lives my sister. I will not starve that known I will find scorpions to sting my quills and fix her in a general eclipse. So this suggests the terrible kind of uh, 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 terrible kind of uh, how terribly he is affected by the uh, act of the Duchess, her sister. Okay. So, here we uh, end today, uh, act, act 2 ends here, so the very next day we will uh, begin from Act 3. <coughs>